this video we're going to look at solving trig equations involving phase angles. First of all we'll describe what a phase angle is. Well a trig equation with a phase angle produces a graph of a wave which has been moved along the x-axis and that movement is called its phase. So I'll draw an example of two functions which have a phase angle. So we would have cos x plus 30, that would be 30 degrees. Okay, so that would be an example of a trig function with a phase angle of 30, and that would look like this. So it still has that sine shape, however, the beginning of the wave is now at minus 30 degrees, and the end of the wave is at 330 degrees. So the graph has, or the wave has moved 30 degrees to the left in the negative x direction. Another example would be sine x minus pi over 3. And this would look like... Okay. So again, we've kind of got that sine shape. However, the start of the sine wave appears to be later at pi over 3. And the end of... The wave is at 7 pi over 3, which is greater than 360 degrees there. So this time the wave has been shifted to the right on the x-axis. So if you have a look at the function cos x plus 30, there is a plus sign between there and the graph has moved to the left in the negative direction. And for the sine x minus pi over 3, there's a negative sign in the function. However, the graph has moved in the positive direction. To solve a trig equation with a phase angle, we're going to follow the same procedure that we have done in previous um, videos for solving trig equations. However, we have to remember to keep the x plus the phase angle or the x minus the phase angle to the very last step of the calculation. And I'll just write that on the next slide. Okay, let's have a go at some examples of this to show you what we mean. Example 1. Solve 2 cos x plus 30 equal to 1. And that's going to be between x and 360 degrees. So we are in degree mode on our calculator. We're going to follow the same steps. So remember, we have to rearrange this first of all. So we would have 2 cos x plus 30 equal to 1, becoming cos x plus 30 equal to half. So at this stage, our y value is positive. So we're looking for when the cos function is positive on our cast diagram. So that's the first and the fourth quadrants. We're going to take the inverse cos, the same as before, but instead of just having x on the left-hand side, we have x plus the phase. So cos to the minus 1 of a half. So that gives us x plus 30 equal to... 60 degrees is our first quadrant and then to find our fourth quadrant 
So this was 60. To find our fourth quadrant, remember we have to do 360 degrees minus that. So that's x plus 30 equal to 60 and 300. Okay. Now this is where that would have been the last step of a basic trig equation, but we still have this plus 20 part here. So we need to resolve that. And to resolve that, we're just doing transposition. So we're adding on the left-hand side. So we're going to take away 30, basically, from both of our um, angles to give us the final answer. So x is equal to 60 minus 30 would be 30, and 300 minus 30 would be 270. So our answers are x equal to 30 degrees and x equal to 270 degrees. And we'll look at another example. So example two, solve, oh, that looks like a five, sorry, solve, that's a five, five sine x minus 0 0.2 equal to negative four. And we're going to be between zero and two pi this time. So normally when you have, not always the case, but normally when this is a decimal, it would suggest that you're in radians, but remember to check your domain. So that definitely tells us that we are in radians this time. So we need our rad mode. And we learned about that um, when we were looking at solving trig equations with radians. Okay, so let's go ahead and start writing out this. So we have our five sine x minus 0 0.2 equal to minus 4 and then we want to rearrange so we have minus 4 over 5 okay so this time our sine function is negative the y value is negative 4 over 5 so in our cast diagram we're looking for when sine is negative and that will be in the third and the fourth quadrants. And now we will take our inverse sign, but remembering that we ignore that negative sign now from this stage. So it's sine to the minus one of four over five. Oh, hopefully everybody can see what I've done wrong here. Let me just rub that out, there we go. So that should be x, following my own rules, x, minus 0 0.2. So I missed that out there. Don't forget your phase angle. It's still there. So it's x minus 0 0.2 equal to sine to the minus 1 of 4 over 5. So we still have the x minus 0 0.2. And sine to the minus 1 of 4 over 5 is 0 0.927. So radians, but decimal radians rather than exact values. That's quadrant 1. That's not one of the values that we want as our final answer, so we're going to have to work out quadrants 3 and 4. Oops, doing it again. I'll rub that out. So we'll x minus 0 0.2. The third quadrant is going to be pi plus 0 0.927. And the fourth quadrant is going to be 2 pi minus 0 0.927. When we work that out, we get x minus 0 0.2 equal to 4.06 and 5.36. And again, we've got that final step to do because we're looking at a phase angle trig equation. So we have to take the minus 0 0.2 to the other side. So we're going to add that on. So we're going to resolve this part, so it's going to be plus 0 0.2. So x is going to be equal to 4.26 and 5.56 rads or radians. And that's our final answer. So the key information that you need to know for solving a trig equation with a phase angle is that you must leave the phase angle to the final step of the calculation, but continue in the same process as before for the basic trig equations.